We're going to tackle the subject of Satan's secret weapon that destroys many that hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we particularly say, are saying in this statement that it's those that hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got nothing to do with those that haven't heard it or aren't hearing it. Got it? Now, of course, we need to know why <coughs> uh, sacred... Satan's secret weapon can destroy many that hear the gospel. We need to know how, when, and we need to know what that secret weapon is. Is that a fair question? Okay, we'll go to Matthew 13. <clears throat> In Matthew 13, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom. All right. Somebody heard the word of the kingdom, the gospel of Christ. The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of God the Father, the gospel of righteousness, the gospel of the apostles are all the same gospel. Yes. Amen? Now, they hear the word of the kingdom but does not understand it. Oh. The devil comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. Now, what was sown in their heart? The word of the kingdom. You're hearing it this morning. But just because you hear it doesn't mean much. If you don't train yourself to get understanding, to listen to that word, <clears throat> Satan is going to come to you and say, there's nothing that that preacher said today and uh, that Bible, you know, I'm just here for the coffee cake or whatever. All right? Satan takes away what was sown in his heart. We just finished a series on Satan, you know, fighting against God. And Satan is one of the sources that influences us to fight against God. Here he has taken the word of God out of the minds of the people that heard it. Okay, so what is the results? They don't believe and are saved. That's the result. They don't believe and get saved. Now, from previous lessons, we've learned we are saved from sin. Sin's a violation of God's word. Not the violation of what somebody else says is right. It's what God says is right. It's not the violation of what you think may be right and wrong. It's what God says is right and wrong. And we're saved from wrath, both in this present life, God can adjust us. Even a nation, he can come adjust us. But there is a day of wrath coming where the whole earth is going to experience the wrath of God, a supernatural manifestation of God. And we are saved from the eternal lake of fire. If you reject Jesus and you live in sin, you are going to go to the lake of fire for eternity. Period. There is no debate. That is what the Bible says. You may not like it, but that's the truth. Okay? Now, if you want to go to the lake of fire, just keep sinning. You reject Christ, and believe me, the, door, the, the road to the lake of fire is wide, and the gate is wide. It's happy to receive anybody it can. All right? And we're saved to do good. Remember, even in Genesis, God told Cain, if you do good. You'll be accepted. So goodness, rightness, is what God ordained from the very beginning all the way to the end of Revelation. Could that be an amen? amen. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> not only to do good, but to obtain eternal life. That is the goal. That is the goal. To get saved from sin, wrath, the lake of fire, do good, and obtain eternal life is the goal. Faith and belief is the process to the goal. Faith and belief is not the goal. And this is where many American Christians fall short. They think because they believe. They think because they got... In fact, they'll say, my faith. All right? Faith is not the goal. Belief is not the goal. A Jehovah Witness came to my door this week and, and I said, listen, I, I won't have nothing to do with Jehovah Witness. You guys are so messed up. 
It's embarrassing. And she goes, well, we do a lot of research. I said, you don't do the research. Your leaders do the research and tell you they did the research, and they're all wrong. Billy Gates did his research, and he come up from his research that there is no God. So what good is research? It is right and truth is what the final answer is. Could that be an amen? amen. She said, I appreciate your honesty. I'll see you later. <laughs> you see. <clears throat> now, faith and belief is the process to the goal. For example, me and my wife got married, and we knew, we had the information and knowledge that if we had sex, we could conceive a baby and have a baby. All right? So we believed the knowledge that we had. Now, in my sanctified imagination, follow me. Our son James was born, 22 inches, 7 and 3 quarter pound or something like that. And, you know, we're so glad to have a baby, just like we believed. Now, say a year goes by, and somehow, because of our lack of proper feeding, proper exercise, proper care, James is still 22 inches and 7 and a half pounds. Ten years later, he's still 22 inches and 7 and a half pounds. You think people are going to be excited? Oh, well, you, you got a baby? You got a baby? See, the baby isn't the goal. It's the process to the goal. The goal is a mature, good, adult young man. Amen? Amen. That's the goal. The baby is just the process we got to follow to get to the goal. And honestly, in America today, many young people are messed up because the parents don't know how to raise kids. And young people are messed up because they don't go to church and find out how they should be raised. Are you there? They get their advice from their peers. You young people, you, 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 in every generation and mine, we have a tendency to be herders. We follow the herd, good or bad. We want to be accepted, you know. We want, yeah. What we need to do is come out from the herd and be part of a herd that follows right. Yes, amen. amen? Yes. Nothing wrong with being a herder if you're in the right herd. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So, understanding the gospel <clears throat> of Jesus Christ is a necessity to reach the goal according to this parable. Is that a true statement? Understanding is a requirement. Do you understand who God is? Do you understand who Jesus is? Do you understand why the Bible was written? Do you understand what the Holy Ghost did? Do you understand what sin and the lake of fire really mean? And you're required to understand, and you cannot blame your rabbi, your pastor, your priest. It is your responsibility to get into the Bible and find out for yourself. Could that be an amen? So, how difficult is it to understand the Bible? Everywhere I go, I don't understand this book, I don't understand this book. We act like it was written in some kind of heavenly language that nobody can interpret. But let me show you how easy it is to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Are you interested? Okay. I'm going to give you the simple answer to the whole Bible. That big, thick book. All right. In just a few minutes. <clears throat> First, we're going to, and, and the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 3, <clears throat> don't turn away from the simplicity of Christ. The gospel is really simple, okay? It's not difficult. Humans make it difficult because we want the Bible to line up to our ideas, you see. <clears throat> and so we go to the Bible to uh, get the Bible to line up with what we're thinking or what somebody's told us to think. Now, I have... One plus one. All right, this is how I teach fractions in school. One plus one. 
okay? How many bananas do I have? One. How many bananas do I have? One. How many bananas now do I have? Two. Okay, one plus one is two. Duh. This is how easy it is to learn the Bible. Now, I have one banana. How many bananas? One. I have one orange. How many oranges? One. One plus one is, I have how many bananas? One. I have how many oranges? One. How many do I have? One of each. One of each. Or better said, I have two fruit. You see, you cannot add unlike fractions. And neither can evolution come up with unlike animals. Every animal has to stay in its kind. If I mix this with a tangerine, what will I get? A tango. No, a tangelo is a tangerine and a grapefruit. All right? I have a tango. When I married my, my wife, Rebecca, I married a tango. <laughs> a mango tango. <laughs> my point is this. Just like you cannot get, <clears throat> you can't put an udder on a horse and call it a cow. It's still a horse. All right? You can't cut off a cow's head and put it on a horse and call it a cow. It's still a what? Horse. The DNA, the sexual parts and all that tells you what it is. It is a horse. In the scriptures, you've got to know how to apply one area to another area. All right? And when the two different areas God is talking about, you've got to be able to make them a common factor before you can get the understanding. Matthew twenty two thirty five. 35. A lawyer come to test Jesus, and this is what people do all the time. They want to try to trick you. The Bible's got problems. The Bible's a book of myths, and Jesus was just a good man, and all this stuff. All right, they come to test Jesus, and they said, Master or teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? The most important, the first in rank commandment in the word. What is it? They're trying to trick him. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Didn't even go to the Ten Commandments. Okay, all your heart is the inner mind, the inner will, and the inner morals. The soul is the spirit, the wind, the spirit. You have a spirit within you, and that spirit has a mind. It has emotions, it has a will, and it has a standard of morality that you, if you listen to it, would be called your conscience. Are you there? That inner spirit would be challenging you when you do wrong if you listen to it. And then he says, with all your mind or your intellect, your brain's got to be engaged. <clears throat> and with all your strength, all your ability. Now, if you have the ability to get up in the morning and go to work, or get up in the morning and feed your baby or take care of whatever, then you have the ability to get up in the morning and read the Bible and pray. Are you there? See, If you have the ability to go to work to provide for your home and keep your home safe and secure, then you have the ability to go to church and work in the kingdom of God to keep it safe and secure. That natural ability that you use to function in life is the same natural ability you use to serve God. Are you there? You see, if you got the ability to learn physics and chemistry and or, uh, how to cut hair and style hair or whatever you choose to do, then you got the ability to read the Bible and fashion your life in a, to a productive Christian. But the problem is Americans don't use their God-given ability or capabilities. 
especially this generation. They want everything done for them. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, to make things clear, in John 14, 23, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. So how do I love God? By keeping his word, by learning his word and keeping it. Okay, it's that simple. The second, Jesus said, the second law is love your neighbor as yourself. Neighbor is those close by you. There's no one closer than your spouse, your parents, or your children. And then the next door, and then the community, then the state, then the nation. And we're to love them. <clears throat> and then he says this tremendous statement, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In the other gospel, it says it sums up or is the law and the prophets. So if you know to love God and to love your neighbor, you just learn the whole Bible in 10 minutes. Oh, it's so difficult. Was that difficult? So when I'm doing things to hurt others and myself, I am violating the two commandments that the whole Bible is built on. Isn't that right? that simple so don't tell me you go to Ezekiel or you go to the uh, Leviticus and you don't understand the thing you say if you're looking for good if you're looking for love if you're looking for God if you're looking how to live in this life you will find it in every book of the Bible if you're looking for a reason to be stupid and ignorant and confused then you will be but you go to a book you got to know why it's written the purpose is written, what it's trying to explain, and then you will learn. Amen? See, you don't go to a book to how to build skyscrapers to be a doctor, do you? Right. Now, Romans 13.10, if there be any civil law, it is briefly understood in this law, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then he gives the Bible definition. God's definition of love is totally different than Webster's Dictionary or whatever dictionary. And your understanding. God's definition of love is <clears throat> love works no harm to their neighbor. They don't do anything to hurt their neighbor verbally, financially, physically. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If there be any law, any law in the Bible, it's summed up in treat others like God would treat them. Are you there? Now, this includes the Ten Commandments. In the Ten Commandments, you have four that's directed to God. God is a spirit, so there are spiritual laws. I am the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image in heaven and in earth or below the earth or in the sea. Okay, the third one. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So many Christians use profanity, it amazes me. Brings an embarrassment to Christ. <laughs> and it comes from a hard source. It comes from a hard spirit. Are you there? Not an innocent thing at all. And the whole world's pro using profanity. So we throw it out. F this, S that. Boy, I'm cool. I can use four letter word. Yeah, none of them have any intelligence. There's no intelligence in any of those words. And when you put God with them, that is really bad. Are you with me? See, this is the third commandment. I shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. It also means that I don't do anything that would bring dispersion upon his name. God is a holy God, a righteous God. Therefore, I will live my life to keep his name good. Amen? The fourth one is 
Remember the Sabbath day? Thou shalt six days you shall do your work. The seventh day you cannot work. But you shall reverence my sanctuary. It's a day of rest and it's a day set aside to call to the house of God and assemble with the people of God and worship him and learn of him and be encouraged in him. Most Americans don't do that. Everybody calls themselves Christians. And everybody thinks they know the Bible. But this sums up the Bible. Are you there? Amen? It's that simple. This is a simple thing. Listen, my dad was a good man. I never knew of my dad leading one soul to Christ. I don't remember him ever even. He never preached. He never taught Sunday school. I never seen him emotionally expressive. But my dad had a name in the community of a good man. And if you were Bill Kinzer's boy, people treated you royally. Why? Because of my dad. He got the basic understanding of the Bible. Do good. Live good. Treat people right. Don't harm yourself. Don't harm your family. Don't harm people. He got it. Are you with me? And everybody had a high respect for my dad. Hallelujah. And why do I say that? Because we, we want to, you know, we, we, we want to go to ministries that are flamboyant speakers and all the rest. And, and, and we just blindly believe what they say without going to the Bible and really getting the basics of the Bible and following it. And this is the basics of the Bible. On loving God and loving your neighbor and loving yourself <clears throat> is the total book. Is that right? Yes. Now, Bible simplicity. Through the Bible, we understand how to love God, love others, and love ourselves, and how not to harm God, others, and ourselves by doing good and right. Is that a correct statement? Yes. It's that simple. That's what it is. That's why it's called the good book. If you read it and apply it, you're going to be a good person. Now, simplicity of the gospel continue. John 20, 30. And John 21, 25. Many other signs, okay? The book is also a supernatural book. It's the only book on earth that tells you how the spirit world works. Many other signs, many other supernatural things Jesus did which are not written in the book. Supernatural things are things human can't do. Jesus walked on water. Humans can't walk on, walk on water. Jesus rose from the dead and, and raised up people from the dead. Humans cannot do that. Once they're dead, they're dead. Only God. God, the spirit world, is supernatural, higher than the physical world. Do you young people understand that? The spirit world has a higher power than the natural world. And all the schools and universities that are trying to tell you that the natural understanding will solve all of our problems, and it won't because... The spiritual world is higher. Hallelujah. All right. The world itself could not contain the books, the Bible says. If everything was written, there was no room in the world. You wouldn't have any room to live on earth. It would be full of books. That's how many supernatural things Jesus did. Things beyond men's capabilities. Now... Chapter 20, verse 31. These are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. That you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And He was God in the flesh. And that believing you might have what? Eternal life. Life is the goal. Belief is the process to the goal. Amen? Amen? Got it? Now, and you get this life through his name. No other name. Muhammad can't do it for you. Joseph Smith can't do it for you. Joel Osteen can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. Your mom and dad can't do it for you. Only Jesus can bring you into eternal life and keep you there. Is that a good amen? Yes. Now, in John 3, 18, 
They that believe not on the Lord Jesus Christ are condemned already because they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and they won't come to the light because their deeds are evil. Why people reject Christ is because they want to do wrong. That's the bottom line. If they want to do right, they have no problem with Christ. They want to live wrong. And they can blame the church as a hypocrite and a bill, you know, they can blame, blame, but we're in a blaming generation. I mean, I, I never, we blame everything. The Democrats blame the Republicans, the Republicans blame the Democrats, the liberals blame the conservatives, the conservatives blame the liberals, you know, the Baptists blame the Catholics, the Catholics blame the Protestants, everybody's blaming. <clears throat> but we got to come to the light. And this is why I'm not a Democrat, a liberal, a conservative, or a Republican. I'm a right Because <laughs> all of these people, they have some good values, and in the middle of those good, value, good values, they come up with something that's ridiculous. I can't accept that. So I unite with them in the areas I can unite with. But I am going to stand for truth and right. How many think that's a good idea? And I'm going to stand for truth and right from the understanding of truth and right that I have, not what somebody is trying to bully me into doing, but what I have learned from God's word, quickened it to me, bore witness to me. I'm going to stand on that for the rest of my life. Amen. Their deeds are evil. That's why they reject Christ. The Muslims reject Christ. The humanists reject Christ. The atheists reject Christ. A lot of people reject Christ. And the bottom line is because they have evil in their heart, they want to do harm, they don't want to change, and then they blame everything in the world. All the time saying, I'm a believer in God. Isn't that right? Does the devils believe in God? Yes. Yeah. Are they going to heaven? No. No. Do they fear and tremble? Yes. Yeah. Humans don't believe in God and they are proud of it. <laughs> are you there? John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ. Listen! The simplicity of the gospel this is eternal life. We got eternal life through believing the process. Okay, through Christ. Eternal life is you may know, you may understand the only true God and understand Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen? And that word know has an intimate relationship to it too. Not only can I understand them, but I have a relationship with them. See, Rebecca understands me. She tells me all the time, I've been married to you all these years. I understand. This is what you're going to do. <laughs> but we also have a relationship. And the two make a great marriage and a great life. Are you with me? Hallelujah. 1 John 2, 3. We know that we know Jesus because we keep his commandments. Now, read it this way. Now read it this way. We understand that we understand Jesus because we keep his commandments. Do you keep his commandments? If you don't keep his commandments, then what's lacking? Understanding. And if you don't understand, who's the problem? Is it God? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Ghost? Is it your mom? Your dad? Your wife? Your husband? No. The problem is you. You're too doggone lazy to seek the Word and seek God and be a possessor of it. Could that be an amen? We want to go to church in America and have a nice music group entertain us and a great flamboyant motivational speaker telling us we're great when we're not great. 
Isn't that right? We don't want to go to church and be told, this is the way, walk ye in it. Oh, that church is, preaches hate preach. That's hate speech. That's a lie of the liberals. Luke 24, 44, Jesus said, All things must be fulfilled written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. So the whole Bible not only tells you to love God and love your neighbor, how to behave on earth and how to behave between you and God, but it also tells you about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The whole Bible. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. If you say you don't understand, Jesus has opened our understanding. That's what he came for. And if we don't understand, we are believing preachers that aren't preaching the gospel because we're too lazy to go with the book and confirm they're telling us the truth. This was the difference. Someone, people keep saying, what made you different? All through my life, they go, you know, you're dead. You come from another mold. You go, no. I didn't believe everything I was told. I went to the book to find out if they were telling me the truth. That's what made the difference. And when they weren't telling me the truth, I rejected it. Are you there? <laughs> and that can make the difference in your life. And now we know the whole book is to what? Love God. Keep his commandment, love our neighbor, and love ourselves by what? Doing no harm to our neighbor or no harm to ourselves. When I take drugs, does that hurt me? Yes. yes. When I have sex outside of marriage, does that hurt me? Yes. Yeah. Fifty percent of Americans have or have had a sexually transmitted disease, and one out of four young people have them. That hurts you. And some of these things are incurable. And some lead to death. 100,000 people die every year in America from drugs and alcohol. Is that harmful? Yes. yes. Preventable deaths, preventable accidents by just not drinking and not taking drugs. It's preventable. Hallelujah. And, and it's that simple to understand. This is hurting me. If I go out on my wife, Rebecca, does that hurt her? Does that hurt my kids? Absolutely. Does it hurt people I'm around, my mom, my dad? Absolutely. Therefore, it is not right to do, so I'm not going to do it. Amen? I don't have to know the <clears throat> post and the tabernacle and the Laver in the tabernacle. I don't have to know what Ezekiel's talking about when he talks about that four square. I don't have to know. I know that they're telling me to be good and to believe in Jesus and to have eternal life. I may not understand where it's at in there, but I know it's in there. Bible simplicity then explains the supernatural spirit world, God, Jesus, Satan, demons, angels, supernatural things that are done that humans can't do eternal life or the eternal lake of fire and right behavior. That's what the book is going to tell me. Those two commandments wraps it up. So now you can go home today and say, I understand the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I know what the whole book's about. On these two hang all the law. There are four different kinds of laws in the Bible. This is why I brought the orange and the bananas. <laughs> you see, there are different areas of the law, but they have the same denominator. God. <laughs> Understand? And when you have the same denominator, you can add and subtract. It will work in an equation. There are, first of all, shadow laws. <clears throat> My shadow will lead you to the real thing. There are laws like lambs that were slain. The blood was sacrificed. 
That was a shadow law that Jesus would die on the cross for the sins of the world. You see, it's an example. You don't go to hell if you didn't sacrifice a lamb. But you will if you reject Christ. Are you with me? That's shadow laws. Uh, then there are civil laws. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, uh, and so forth. That is, when I hurt my neighbor, it is a civil law. Civil laws also have a punishment. If I rape somebody, or I kill somebody, or rob somebody, I have to be punished. I have to be properly punished and corrected so I will change, and so the young people growing up will not follow that lifestyle. That's the Bible. And when America does not punish criminals, they're not giving our young generation the fortitude to avoid evil. And just a slap on the hand, well, no problem. I, I get three slaps before they're really going to do anything, and then that's not much. Maybe a year in jail. I'll handle that. I'll blow. <clears throat> if you really had the right punishment for the right crime, America would be a fairly righteous nation, and our young people growing up would f have a reason to follow right and not wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. That's civil laws. Okay? And then there are spiritual laws. See, let my prayer come before thee as incense. See, he hears the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man of Ellen Mutt. You have not because you ask not. See, that is a spiritual thing. It has nothing to do with human understanding. God just said, if you pray and ask me according to my will, I will hear you. That is a spiritual law. If you confess your sin and repent from your sin, turn from your sin. I will forgive that sin. I will cleanse that sin and cleanse all unrighteousness from you. That is a spiritual law. If I do this, God will do that. Amen? And then there's wise laws. Wise laws is like the wise man stores up for the future. The fool spends everything he's got. Now, you don't go to hell for spending everything you got. And the civil authorities aren't going to arrest you for spending all your money. It is a wise law. It's just when a bad day comes or a bad season comes, you got nothing to back up. You got no backup. What I wanted to show you is all the laws in God. The common denominator is God created them. And they can be added and subtracted and understood in the Bible. Got it? You just got to know when you're looking at a shadow law and a wise law. And you got to know the difference. 